When I was still back in the ninth grade, I would used to hang out with my friends. Back then, I had nothing much to do other than just hang out with my friends at movie theaters or convenience stores. One night, I was walking home alone, until I noticed that I had been feeling a little colder than usual, so I had to rush home. After I made it back, I have noticed that I got an email from a friend saying that we were hanging out tomorrow at a movie theater. I decided to accept the request, and I wanted to go there because I had nothing to do tomorrow. It was a weekend. The next day, I was going to school. I got prepared, I brushed my hair, I had breakfast, all of that, etc. I arrived early, like usual, until I just sat next to one of my female friends. We'll call her Evelyn. Me and Evelyn have been hanging out for a long time, for the past few weeks, mostly with our friends. We go to the movie theaters quite often during weekends, but sometimes we also go to convenience stores and other places that we like to go to, like fast food restaurants or malls. We go shopping way too much, so we noticed that we really needed to lay off the mood. We needed to pony up some money, so we did. Since we barely had part-time jobs at McDonald's, we don't get paid much due to the fact that we spend mostly on takeouts. I arrived at third period class when I noticed that one of the female students wanted to be my partner even though the fact that we never spoken to each other. She only or barely arrived to school for the past two months, so we'll call her the love bug. There will be a reason why I call her the love bug due to the fact that I cannot remember her name and that she bugged me around for who I was. Love bug and I never talked, but ever since that date occurred, we finally did for the first time. She wanted to be my study partner, and so I accepted. She said, Hi, can, can I be your study partner? I never got a chance to talk to you. I said, Sure. We studied together, and we finished our class. After that, the school was over, and we finished the rest of our classes. After that, I took me and Evelyn, including a few friends, to the movie theaters. We paid for our tickets and paid for the popcorn, and we watched the movie. But I also noticed that we seemed to bump into Lovebug. I said, hi, Lovebug. Funny running into you here. I said, oh, hi. Nice to meet you. I didn't expect to see you here. We're still studying together, right? I said, yeah, sure. See you back at school. And she walked away without saying another word. Well, I brushed it off like it was nothing, and so we returned back home. I arrived home later at night, when I have noticed that I got another email from my friends saying that we were planning on doing something for the next weekend. I would plan not to do anything for the next weekend since I had plans to do at home. I had to help mom clean the basement for the next week. The next day, I arrived early at school, like usual. We did the usual. We arrived, we studied, we did our work in class. I arrived at third period class, the same as we did with Lovebug, until Lovebug wanted to work on the assignment. We did the assignment, but we weren't finished. The teacher said that we had permission to give each other's phone numbers to each of one of our partners. So, I wanted to give Lovebug mine, but she said she didn't have a phone because hers was stolen. She said that she lost it at a party or somewhere else because she never had it with her for the past few months. So she wanted to come over to my place and study together. I accepted the request noticing that I don't have friends over usually, so I let her through. She arrived at my place later that day, and we began to study more. We studied together, and her pencil 
was writing. Barely a little. Her pencil wasn't dancing much, since she wasn't writing anything. Just scribbling down on a blank paper. I was still reading what we were supposed to be studying on. So I proceeded to continue my work while she just does that scribble thing. A few more minutes had passed, and I couldn't take that scribbling any longer. I told her, why are you scribbling on a paper? She said, oh, it's nothing. I just got bored and waited until you had something to answer. I didn't have any answer, but I just stared at her in an awkward silence. She stared at me normally, and we noticed that we had to say something. She said, um, are you okay? I said, I'm fine. Should we study more? She said, sure, but I kind of want to get something to eat. I said, sure, I have some leftovers in the fridge. Let's go grab some. We grabbed some leftovers out of our fridge and we ate. After that, we continued studying. This time she wasn't scribbling and she was focused on the assignment. After that, we were finished and she left. Another week had passed and I had to go clean the basement. I invited Evelyn over so she can help me clean up. She accepted. We both cleaned the basement and dug out a few things that we don't need. Also, we managed to find a few items that I was missing, including items that I had as a kid. An old teddy bear, a few toys, and a few Pokemon trading cards. Evelyn asked, are these yours? I said, yes. They were old childhood memories, but I don't play with them anymore. We both looked at them and examined them. And we put them in a box. I wanted to keep them in my room for a memory. So I did. I hid them under my bed because I didn't want my friends seeing them. Even though I, I don't usually invite friends over, I didn't want them to find it. They were precious memories of mine. After that, I cleaned up the basement and I finished with Evelyn. I told Evelyn, thanks for your help, I appreciate it. She said, no problem. I hope we can hang out more soon. Evelyn left, and I took one last peek of that box that where I put it all my stuff in there. I looked at the trading cards, and I looked at the teddy bear. They were all precious memories, so I just put it on back where they were. I put it on back under my bed and fell asleep for the night. The next day... It was still another day off. I still had a lot to do. I didn't have much to watch on TV, so my mom told me to clean the garage because there was another place where I haven't checked. I cleaned the garage, but this time all by myself. My mom couldn't help me because she was busy with work, so I had to clean it up myself. Until then... Lovebug showed up. Lovebug said, Hi. Funny running into you. I said, What are you talking about? This is where I live. This is my home. She said, All right. Um, I thought I missed direction. I was completely confused and very concerned. Even though that she barely knows me. Why is she here? Why is she walking around my neighborhood? I just brushed it off. Anyway, she stared at me. I was still cleaning, but I didn't feel comfortable while she was staring at me, cleaning up the garage. 
A few, min a few minutes had passed, and she said, Do you need help? I said, Yes, please. I need to get this done before I head to lunch. She helped clean the garage. We even found a few things. We found some old photos, and we found a football. I remember playing with that football when I was in sixth grade. Me and my friends used to go tackle it along the field. We even tackled each other for no reason. I'm pretty sure we were teaching ourselves how to wrestle, but we were younger. It took a few more minutes, but we finally managed to clean the garage fully. We finished cleaning the garage and Lovebug was exhausted. I was heading to lunch until I couldn't just leave her there. I wanted to thank her, so I invited her over to lunch, even though my mom wasn't home. I had the house all to myself. I invited her over for lunch. We sat down. We ate. We talked. She was still curious about me. She said, Um, do you have anyone else in your life? Are you in a relationship? I said, Well, um, there's this one girl I wanted to ask for a long time, but I don't think I'm ready to ask her out. She said, Oh, who is this girl? Um, do we, you know her? What's her name? Where does she live? Do you know her family? Does she have family? Does she have any others protecting her? Until she's been asking me strange questions. I don't know why she would ask me all of that. It kind of freaked me out a little. I just told her she's just a friend and I wanted to ask her out, but I'm just a little nervous because it's my first time. She said, Oh, okay. I'm sorry to bother you with that. I didn't mean to scare you like that. I said, No, it's all right. I just didn't think someone would just come out and say it all of that to me, but I'm just a little ner freaked out. I'm very sorry, but I felt nervous. She said, Oh, you're just very shy to talking to girls like me. That's okay. You know, there's something that I wanted to tell you, but I'm also nervous too. I said, Oh, what are you nervous about? She said, I'm nervous to ask you instead, even though we just known each other. I said, well, um, would you like to hang out? I felt a little relieved that a girl had a crush on me. But I didn't know her much. Until I noticed that I had made the biggest mistake in my life. We started dating. We hung out. It's been like a few weeks until by the end of the month we finally had our first kiss and confessed I finally was able to get over my fear of talking to girls even though I'm just barely in high school I was still a little nervous to ask someone out like that because she was the one who asked me we started dating until we matured a bit. We started going to parties, but she wasn't into them. She said, I'm not into parties. Let's just be by ourselves. Just us, you and me. I said, um, okay, anything. We started going out alone. Sometimes to my room. My mom wasn't home much ever since she was working. And my dad, well, let's just say that he usually comes and goes. One day after school, we headed back to my room. We had to study. 
then, she kissed me. But it wasn't a normal kiss, other than sticking her tongue in my mouth. It was the first time that she did it. I said, this is not a good time for that. We have to study. Our examines are coming up. She said, that's all right. We still got a few hours. Let's try to make some music together. I said, all right. We made out for a few minutes, but I couldn't take it anymore. I knew I had to let go of her. But she wouldn't let me. She grabbed onto me. I tried to push her away, but she gripped me. She even wrapped her hands around me, like, like a grapple. I didn't, I didn't feel much, but I can feel the grasping hands tightening around me, like she was trying to choke me or something. I tried pushing her, but I couldn't. And so I just had to use aggressive force. I told her, get off me. She said, come on, just a few more minutes. I said, no, we have to study. If you're not going to study, then I'll have to ask you to leave. She said, fine, I'll leave. She left. I had to study all by myself, so I did. The next day, the exams were coming up. My friend Evelyn had aced the test. And I got in second place. As the top of our class, we went, we went out to celebrate. I knew this place that me and Evelyn could have a special meal just to celebrate our exams. I invited her over to eat. We arrived at the restaurant, but I have noticed something. Something out of place. I saw Lovebug. Lovebug was there. I recognized her same clothes and her same hairstyle. So I ignored her. Me and Evelyn grabbed dinner and we started to talk. Until Lovebug had approached us. She said, who is this girl? I told her, this is my friend Evelyn. She said, why would you hang out with her instead of me? Why are you cheating on me like this? Lovebug already knew that I had a friend named Evelyn. I didn't know how she would react when I introduced her to her. This is just something awkward in particular. Everyone stared at us like it was a scene. We both froze. Everything became silent. I decided to take Evelyn and go. We took our leftovers. I told Lovebug, See you at school tomorrow. We arrived back at Evelyn's place and we finished our leftovers. Evelyn was concerned about Lovebug. I told her that she was my girlfriend and how we dated, and how we met. And that was clearly it. Evelyn was very shocked, because Evelyn has seen what Lovebug's been up to. She said, Lovebug has been doing strange things at school. She even followed you. I saw her taking pictures of you with her phone in the hallways. Evelyn even took pictures of her taking pictures of me. She showed me a few pictures. I just thought that maybe she's just doing that stalker thing. It usually happens to couples a lot. 
Me and Evelyn just brushed it off. We didn't bother thinking about it. We finished, and I left. I headed back to my house. Buffbug and Evelyn reminded me how we cleaned up the basement and garage, so I took a quick peek under my bed for that same box that I found in the basement. I couldn't find anything under my bed, so I grabbed the flashlight. I couldn't see it. The box was missing. I asked my mom about the box, but she didn't see it anywhere. The box was completely missing. I also tried to look for the old pictures and other precious items I also found. I also kept those in my room. Those precious items found in the garage. But they were all missing too. I couldn't find them anywhere. I even went to the basement and the garage to see if they were there. But nothing. The next day had passed. And I told Evelyn about my missing items. My precious belongings had vanished. Like somebody had stolen them. She said, maybe we'll find him somewhere. After school, Evelyn came over to my place. We searched the basement and the garage. We even searched my room. All they were were just belongings, but Evelyn didn't mind helping me search for them. We couldn't find it. After that, we gave up. I decided to walk her over for all the trouble that she's gone through. I helped her walk to her place. It was only a short minute walk. She only took about 10 minutes to walk there. So we did. We decided to go to this convenience store. We headed over to the 7-Eleven nearby. We grabbed some Slurpees and a few snacks. Until I noticed that Lovebug was after us. She's been following us. Usually the stalkers just hide. But Lovebug was in clear sight. Evelyn didn't notice her, but I did. And I didn't told her. It was for the best. I told Evelyn, let's take this other route to your place. It was a longer way but it would be a little safer to make sure we're not being followed. I didn't ask her any questions, and she didn't ask me anything about the route. We went to the other side. We even ran around a few laps until she has been a little suspicious about me. I told her not to look back. We tried sprinting a little bit, and we were very careful not to trip over anything because we still had our food in our hands. It took a few minutes, but we finally reached her place safely. I tried looking back one more time to make sure she wasn't following us, and so she was gone. Lovebug was out of sight. I'm guessing we must have lost her. We went over back to Evelyn's place, and we finished our food. We talked, we watched a little bit of anime, and we also played some video games. Evelyn was a gamer, so she spent a lot of time in front of video games and TV. After a few hours, I decided to go back to my place. But the next day, when I arrived at school, Evelyn was not there. Evelyn was absent. I'm guessing maybe that she must have had a rough day yesterday. She must have been exhausted from all that basement and garage searching. After school, I decided to head over to her place. After that, the place was completely covered in yellow tape. Not an ordinary yellow tape, but a police crime, kind of tape.
The tape was completely condemned over, all over her house. The police surrounded the area. I completely ran into the house, but I was stopped by the police. The police said, sir, please stay back. Do you live here? I said, no, this is my best friend's house. What happened? I panicked. Evelyn was murdered. So were her family. They were all murdered. I felt speechless and shocked. Everything was all melting around me. A few days later, I paid my condolence to Evelyn. I felt completely alone. I already took a wild guess of who did it. She was the only witness. After that, I immediately reported to the police. I told them about Lovebug. I went to Lovebug's place to get a straight answer, but Lovebug has gone missing. It's already been past three months and still no sign of Lovebug. I still go to school. I still hang out with my friends. But I don't walk alone anymore. I walk with one of my friends. I just hope that wherever she is, she will get the help that she needs. It's been past three months and I haven't got anything. Until one week later, I finally received something in the mail. It was a box. I opened it. It contained all my missing belongings. All my cards, all my pictures, including my teddy bear. But they have been completely drawn on and shredded. My teddy bear was all covered up in red stitches. And my pictures were cut out with a face, a face of her. I turned over the box into the police to see if they would investigate. It has been a few months and I still haven't got anything. I just hope that wherever she is, I hope that she'll get the help that she'll need. All I can do now is move on with my life. Um, that's that. That's my story. <laughs>